Welcome to lesson 48 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 6 in the section on hydraulic circuits. In this lesson we will be learning about quick release coupling and quick release couplers. First of all, what is quick release coupling? Well, it is a system of coupling hydraulic hoses that can be attached and detached quickly. That's where the name comes from, quick release coupling. They are used on agricultural machines and agricultural tractors on places where there is an option to connect an external hydraulic machine for agricultural tools. Here we can see a two-way plow and we can see a hydraulic cylinder and its auxiliary hydraulic system that is being supplied through the quick release couplers or the hydraulic couplers as we can see here on the back of the tractor. Here we can see a picture of a quick release coupler. In the later slides we will see how does it work. Now here we can see a bigger picture of the hydraulic couplers and here we can see a hydraulic coupler removed for maintenance. The quick release coupling can also be found on hydraulic excavators and loaders which can have various tools attached to them which have hydraulic motors on them such as various grabbers as we can see here or hydraulic hammers as we can see here. Basically these machines, uh, tractors, excavators, loaders have these quick release coupling units on them so they can supply the auxiliary hydraulic systems that can be attached or detached from this equipment. So if we have a tool that is removable and on that tool we have a hydraulic motor of some kind, we have to make sure that our base machine can supply the hydraulic fluid to this hydraulic motor. Now on tractors we can see these coupling devices or units on the back of the tractor we can see them right here. Sometimes they can also be on the front of the tractor. On the boom arm ends on an excavator, as we can see here, we can see them as well, because the interchangeable tools go mostly on the place where the excavator bucket should be, and we have to make sure we can supply the auxiliary hydraulic system with hydraulic fluid. Because it would be too much work to bring crimping tools, the crimping press, to change the fittings on hoses, to add new hoses, engineers found a way of interconnecting hydraulic circuits fairly easy by using minimal forces and minimal knowledge from the operator of the equipment or of the machine. Here we can see the back end of a Massey Ferguson tractor and we can see the quick release couplers for the auxiliary hydraulic systems. Now the quick release couplers are made in two versions. Flat face quick couplers as we can see on this picture number one and if you look at the front of the coupling side you can see it's flat and this side is also flat and that's where the name comes from and there are poppet quick couplers as we can see on picture number two. This actually right here is a valve that opens, we'll see how it works in a second. Let's look at all the parts and let's discuss how this coupling works. First of all, the left side is the socket side, which is mounted on the pipeline which brings the fluid from the pump to the auxiliary motor on one connector and brings it back to the reservoir on the second connector. Now the coupler body, the socket part, is marked by red and the nipple side or the side that's going to the hydraulic motor, the auxiliary hydraulic motor, is painted blue. On number one we have the fitting on the machine side. On number two we have the body of the coupler, the socket side, which goes onto the fitting because these couplers have to be maintained. They have some springs in them that can go loose, they have some o-rings, so we need a way of disconnecting them quickly and 
making sure they're clean and maintained properly. So first we have the fitting and then we put the body of the coupler on that fitting. So red is the socket side. Number three, we have the spring in the socket side. We, we, we'll talk about what that spring does in a minute. Number four, we have the non-return valve in the socket side, right here. And number five, we have the non-return valve in the nipple side, so right here, okay. On number six, we have the O-ring seal between the socket side coupler and the nipple, which goes into this coupler. On number seven, we have the latching sleeve and spring. We can see that right here, and we can see that spring right here, these four dots. On number eight, we have the steel balls all around the socket, which make sure that this nipple doesn't disconnect. We'll see how that functions in a second. On number nine, we have the lock ring. And on number 10, we have the auxiliary side fitting with the, with the nipple and the connector. Okay, so let's take a look how this works. The fitting that is on the machine side, which is marked by number one, is attached to the pipeline that is connected to the pump and supplies the fluid. On this fitting, the body of the quick release coupler is attached, as we can see on number two. So the body of the quick release socket side coupler is attached to the fitting. In the coupler body, there is a non-return valve, which we can see marked here on number four. This non-return valve is paired with the spring, which is marked by number three. The objective of this spring is to close the valve once the coupler is detached. So this spring always pushes this valve on the right side. So when this spring pushes the valve, it closes the opening, little opening right here, and it doesn't let any of the fluid that is right here go outside, okay? So that's the objective of the spring. A good enough sealing is achieved by putting an elastic O-ring on the piston of the non-return valve. Right here we have the O-ring on the piston and right here we also have the O-ring. On the body of the coupler, we also have the latching sleeve and spring mechanism right here. So this is the latching sleeve and we can see the, the spring that is all around the coupler. And what this mechanism does, uh, it ensures that the nipple side of the auxiliary hose pipe side stays attached to the coupler body side. This mechanism consists of the latching sleeve and spring, steel balls that we can see here that go all around the coupler, and the lock ring on number nine. The balls are pushed by latching the sleeve and they drop into the socket of the nipple side, which we can see right here. We can see the socket where the balls should be. If we look at this 3D model, we can see that socket right here. So this is where the balls enter and they block this nipple from disconnecting. The plug side of the coupler, which is marked by number 10, is fixed on the hose line, which is the line for supplying the auxiliary motor on the detachable tool, agricultural machine, etc. Now this side of the coupler which is blue, there is also a non-return valve. Of course, this non-return valve has the same objective as the one on the socket side to prevent fluid leakage when the coupler is detached. It also has a spring mechanism, which we can see right here. Of course, this is a picture where the coupler is complete. So this is a diagram of the nipple side, the auxiliary side, and the socket side connected. The steel balls, a socket for them, and the latching mechanism make sure that this coupling is done effectively. 
The spring in this latching and unlatching mechanism pushes the sleeve to the right side, so it stays in place pushing the balls inwards toward the little crest on the nipple side. These balls ensure that the coupling doesn't fail and doesn't detach by itself. Now the ceiling number six, the ceiling with the o-ring, makes sure that there is no fluid leakage between the nipple side of the coupler body and the socket side. The contact of the two pistons of the non-return valves push each other, opening the valves and compressing the springs. Once the coupler is detached, the springs push the non-return valves into their closed position, closing the valve and not letting any more of the fluid pass. The question right now is, I am an operator and how do I detach this easy quick coupler? Well, easy. Just pull the latching sleeve to the left side in this situation or pull it to the coupler body side. Of course, this coupling and decoupling doesn't really come without a price. When we detach the couplers, some of the oil stays on the coupler or leaks on the ground or on the machine. When that oil stays in the coupler, it will accumulate various impurities and dirt which can end up in the hydraulic circuit. That is not good and that is something we want to avoid. That's why it is wise to clean up the interior side of these connectors once in a while and when it's not in use, so that the dirt and grime don't end up in the crevices of the coupler and, of course, end up in your hydraulic circuit. As we know, machines work in dust and dirt, so there is plenty of stuff to get into the system that we don't want to have in the system. It is obvious that every type of damage of this fine coupling device or every little deformation of the coupler calls for the change of these couplers. If the nipple isn't attaching easily and it seems that it requires a lot of force, something is not right and it shouldn't be forced into the nesting point. So if this little part is not going in here effectively, you shouldn't force it. Remember, if you need a tool to attach this, then you're doing something wrong. If handled correctly and maintained, cleaned, these couplers have proven to be very reliable components and are used widely in hydraulic systems. If you don't have this little plastic protector on your coupler, you should go out and buy it. It is very cheap and it can make sure that your couplers are long lasting and you don't get dirt and grime inside of here when the auxiliary hydraulic system isn't used and when the coupler isn't active. Remember, oil accumulates dirt and grime, you have to clean them and you have to make sure that they're covered and protected. Of course, I don't have to mention the environmental impact that hydraulic oil can have when it is spilled on the ground. On one of the previous slides, we said there are two types of quick couplers, flat face and poppet style couplers. What are the differences? Well, flat face couplers are more expensive, but flat face couplers lose much less oil when disconnecting. When poppet style couplers are disconnected, they lose about a tablespoon of oil per detachment. So these are more expensive, but more effective. They are easy to clean because of course they have a flat face. You just have to clean the flat surface and flat face couplers allow more flow than poppet style ones because they have a much larger surface area for the fluid to flow through. Poppet style couplers like this are more economic but they lose more oil and they have these little crevices and, and parts where dirt and grime can get into. I don't have to mention that they are more difficult to clean than the flat face couplers. 
This is it for the lesson on quick release coupling. Thank you for listening and for staying focused and see you in the next lesson in which we will talk about hydraulic accumulators.